It is time for Siege Turtle Reaction. I hope you guys are excited. I know I am. Some epic Siege Turtle React content, my friends. That is, ooh, it's gonna be so good. All right, get me a Siege Turtle in the chat right now. Get me a turtle in the chat and prepare to witness the glory of this PC Gamer reveal. That's right, guys. Athene exposes massive update. What the fuck? Well, PC Gamer has one-upped Athene here and has exposed a massive update to Guild Wars 2. Siege Turtles are here. Let's take a look. Volume. Ooh, nice. Ooh, look at them. They look pretty sick. Combat mount. Look! Hundreds of years ago, the nomadic Luxon Armada trained massive turtles to bear weapons of war across the Jade Sea. Look at them go! Now, you can raise your own turtle from yes. an adorable hatchling to a cannon carrying. Bonus meme, you can have one as a ranger pet. You can have the baby one as a ranger pet too, by the way. So if you want to have like the double turtle and be really cute, boom, you can do that. Also, notice the fact that you are walking underwater with the turtle. That's right, you can do a Pirates of the Caribbean roleplay with a giant turtle. Let's go. Mount. Modern siege drones are equipped with the latest Jade Ooh, Tech advancements, relaxing. including powerful jump jets and <laughs> health boosters. Use these tools to lift your turtle across rough terrain <laughs> and slam your enemies for massive damage. Ma Ooh, massive damage! All, there's plenty of room for a friend. Take your favorite siege engineer out for a ride and make the most of the turtle's cameras. Anti-air. Well, you know, it looks like fun. I mean... Guild Wars 2. They're getting value out of the mounts, right? They're pushing the mounts to the limit here. Uh, they know that their mount system is really good, and they can use that as a good selling point. I think this is actually a pretty cool feature. I like that it's two players. Really brings something new to the table there. Combat mount should be pretty interesting to see how that works out, if it does a lot of damage. Uh, break bar. It was interesting that we saw the cannons firing up at the end here. It almost seems to me that there might be some kind of like really long range artillery, you know, firing up and then really far, right? Or maybe even anti-air. There could be like flying enemies coming out in the future and you could use the siege turtle to actually, you know, shoot them down in addition to like firing forwards and smashing people. The way it seems that they've actually designed this is that the person who's actually driving the turtle is going to be able to have different abilities um, to the person on top, which, well, I mean, well, yeah, exactly as you expect, right? But it seems like the person driving the turtle can kind of like make it boost up, can steer it, right? Can make it smash into enemies. Like use, they said health boosters or maybe like a self heal or a barrier or something like that appears to be the abilities. I do, um, it does seem to be a proper all rounder, right? It, it, I thought it was going to be slower, right? Okay, um, because in the original Guild Wars 1, these things were slow as hell. It doesn't appear they're actually that slow. You can see them padding around pretty damn fast. The animations look great. Look at them. Look at, look at the little feet go. Look at them. Okay, the animations look fantastic uh, on these siege turtles so far with the head moving, like all the legs moving at the same time, like landing and jumping all over the place. Looks very, very cool um, to use there as well. But yeah, it, it seems good. And I actually think it makes a lot of sense, by the way, um, that they have gone for a very general purpose mount. Why? Well, think about it, guys. You are a new player coming into Ender Dragons. You probably don't have a Skyscale, right? You probably don't have a Griffin. You probably don't have, okay, the Roller Beetle. So it makes sense that you actually do have this mount that can do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, right? It has a way to go through water. It has a way to go over land. It can jump over stuff there with its boosters, right? And you can even fight with it, and you can even carry a friend with you, right? So if a friend comes to join the game and they don't even have a mount, then great. You can you can carry them around in the turtle. They can fire at stuff there. i got to say, I, I mean... I, w I was expecting this to be good, right? So I I'd be like, oh, oh, react, react face, react thumbnail. Ah, ah. But I'm not surprised. Like, I, I was expecting the Siege Turtle to be really well done um, because Anet have always done a good job with their mounts. It is a good system they have in this game compared to other MMORPGs. They, you know, it's just, yeah, it's very well fleshed out compared to the competition. So I can't say that I'm overly shocked by the implementation looking solid. I do think there are some really interesting 
uh, ideas of this being added in World vs. World. I almost thought you'd have to disable a lot of it. Like, you can't have that. Okay, that, guys, in World vs. World, not good, right? You know, that, that's, uh, no, 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 no. Okay, the War Claw is bad enough. There are still loads of spots in, in World vs. World where you can use the War Claw dismount to kind of get into structures. So, to be fair, the turtle is so huge, it wouldn't be able to fit through quite as well in a lot of areas, so maybe it wouldn't actually be that bad. Um... <laughs> But they'd have to limit it a fair bit, I think, to make it usable. Um, but there are some interesting possibilities, like for like a long-range siege, kind of like a, a cross between a trebuchet and a siege golem. So it wouldn't have as much health, right? Because mounts don't have crazy HP in Guild Wars 2, but they often have very powerful effects. It'll be like a golem is very, very slow, very, very tanky, and can break walls and stuff. But the gol the, the turtle is a bit squishier, uh, requires a lot of supply to deploy it, for example. Okay, uh, and you know, you, maybe you can only build it in your territory. You can't just like randomly start building siege turtles, right? Like in you know, in the enemy keep, right? You can't start mounting up out of nowhere. You got to go back to base to get one. I think there's actually possibility that being implemented in World War Sword in a way that is sane, right? Um, at least a little bit. Um, but it, <laughs> I think they will test it, right? We know that they're going to test it. Um, well, we don't know that. I mean, they, they have actually mentioned World vs. Sword and the Siege Turtle. It was basically, we'll add it if we think it isn't going to ruin the game, just to paraphrase there a little bit. So you might see, like, the odd test uh, with it to see if it if it's going to work. Um, but, yeah, I guess that very much depends on how much they can balance split it and how much they can make it behave differently because, I'm not going to lie, having the ability to have a flying turtle... It's probably not a good idea there, but yeah, I, I was expecting the uh, water walking, by the way, or rather this. This is sick. Okay, this is great. It, you're going to be, the role playing is going to be amazing with this. You can have underwater siege turtle battles with this. This is epic. I love to see it. Just look, I, oh, just making some kind of like cinematic, uh, you know, trailer with this is going to be amazing. Like this army of turtles walking underground. That's pretty great. The turtles look good. They're going to make some serious money, guys. Look, you even got the cute little baby turtle right over here. That's going to be a ranger pet, too. Uh, everyone's going to be spending so much money on the gem store, guys. Okay, people are going to go berserk, right? People are going to want to get siege turtle skins. They're going to buy this. It's going to fund the next expansion. And honestly, I love to see it, right? Uh, this is this is good stuff, right? You know, I like it. There was actually an article that actually came with this, too, and we might as well go and very quickly take a look uh, at this article. Um, you know, just to kind of run it down here as well. I'm just going to skim over it. We're not going to read the entire thing because a, a lot of that was essentially conveyed uh, in the video quite well. Actually, a lot of the features here. Is there anything here that's actually specifically new? Um, I don't really think so here, really. I think it will just confirm a few things, right? Ah, yeah, here we go. So, yeah, um, it handles it. Yeah, so it starts slow. Yeah, so it, it, to kind of make it so it isn't like, oh, this is like the same as like, a normal mount. It has a, It has to build momentum there. Uh, it, wait, it has a speedometer. Wow, the beetle community would love that. I wonder if they're going to add that to other mounts, actually. Uh, let's see if they go ahead and do that. That would be a really nice quality of life, I think, um, for a lot of players who are super into mount stuff, right? Particularly the beetle racing. There you go. Entering the smallest red zone, the siege becomes hard to handle. Drifting into corners as it struggles to... <laughs> Dude, what? This is gonna be amazing. You're gonna like me swinging the tail out as you go around the corner. <laughs> That's epic. I love to see it. Yes, yeah, so you've got to slow it down as you're gonna spin out of control with your turtle. You're just gonna be, you can't handle the pace, right? It's good. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Yeah, that makes sense. Not as well as the mount custom design for that particular role. Again, this makes sense. Like I said, guys, bear in mind that coming into this, you'll you get the Raptor and Springer for free, I believe, when you're playing through EOD. But you might not necessarily have Par the Far. You might not necessarily have the other mounts. So it makes sense that the Turtle is definitely a bit of a jack of all trades, master of none, outside of the combat encounter there as well, right? That's pretty good. Yeah, rarely at a disadvantage when traversing a space. Hell yeah. Even if there are other better tools at your disposal. Well, clearly these guys have not forgotten about the Sky... They forgot about the Sky Scale there. Hell yeah. Okay, you can remain on the siege turtle throughout a fight. For the driver, that means a slam attack. See, the turtle smash for big damage on a lengthy cord. Oh, so you can't actually use the guns unless you have a co-part. Yeah, I, that's kind of the idea I got, um, or the, the impression I got from um, uh, from the trailer, actually. But this confirms it. So yeah, in order to actually use this to its full potential, you are going to need two players. The player who spawns the siege turtle is the driver. They can be boarded by one other player in their party or squad. Uh, the numbers may change as the Siege Turtle goes through better. It's targeted AoEs 
We're doing 7,000 damage per target with an attack that can hit up to 10 enemies in its radius, which also affects burning. It hits hard, but it's bounced by the ammo counter. Currently, you can hold it to five shots that recharge over time. Fast. Oh, fast when you're at full speed. I love it. So you want to... <laughs> so the optimal gameplay for this, it's like spinning around the fight. Like you're on a world boss, you're there like going around, oh, oh, barely keeping control of it right there. Now... They don't really say how fast it can actually fire, and it does have the reload, but 7,000 DPS, that's probably going to be a pretty big DPS increase for a lot of players in open world, particularly that it's AoE. That's pretty big. It should provide good burst damage, but then its DPS quickly falls off. Oh, I see. So, it's yeah, it's got the ammo, and I guess that... Oh, I guess it can fire pretty fast, and so you can, like, go pew, 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 pew. I see, I see, I see. Uh, it can... It's got 40,000 hit points. Oh! Wait, it actually has a defiance bar. Oh, so they are, yeah, they are definitely thinking about World Bus as well then with this. Yeah, that, yeah, because the the stuff like the Warclaw, just like flat out cannot be CC'd because that makes sense. But this, it would actually, yeah, you'd be able to actually force people off the turtles if you actually break the bar. That'd be pretty interesting. Uh, Amount, it causes a lengthy cooldown before you could resummon it as well. So yeah, um, it, and it will look at it. Uh, yeah, so there's a cooldown too. Yeah, they're definitely thinking about it. Right, uh, they are 100% thinking about adding it to other game modes for sure. Looking at the way that works there. 40k HP is actually not that much either in World vs. World. Um, okay, 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 cool, cool, okay, cool. Alright, alright, they're, you know, they, they've, they've covered some bases there, they have. And of course it would still have AoE damage. I mean, if it did like a billion damage AoE in World vs. World, that would probably be not ideal. But then again... Um, you also have to bear in mind that we already have loads of damage. Does it say how much range it has, actually? Because uh, it, it's Siege Turtle, right? Should have very, very high range, but it doesn't really say. Okay. Uh, to, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Naturally, the Siege Turtle also inherits the mechanics and buffs of the wider mount system. If you earn the Crystal Champion Masters of the Living World, you can access the various bomb skills that you share health, re recharge endurance, and launch off the Siege Turtle's back. You also gain the passive bonuses of the mount shared mastery. Once you max out the Siege Turtle's masteries, give a 50% health boost to all other mounts. Wow. So it actually has that mega passive there as well. That's going to be, well, I guess it's kind of nice to have, you know, to doing like races. You know, Labyrinth racing on the Raptor is going to be better now. Hell yeah, because you're really, really tanky. You love to see it. Oh, oh, this is great. Okay, the co-pilot's second ability outside of like firing the cans is a speed boost, which can be collaboratively used to, co to mitigate the deceleration of it to turning as well as to ensure faster ammo recharge. So you can like, ca you can pump the gas. This means you can actually troll your team as well. You can like, you know, while you want to go around a corner, boom, pump the gas, the turtle goes insanely fast and then just flies off the edge and you, you know, you kill both players. All right, now that's good. The key for Arena is that partnering up should allow actual collaboration, letting players work together rather than simply perform their own assigned jobs. The Siege Tales Mastery Line helps reinforce this aspect too. One option letting the driver help further regenerate ammo using the default slam attack. Oh, so you get the slam, get the ammo. Use the speed boost, get more ammo, and go even faster. I love to see it. I mean, <laughs> wow, they went hard on this. They went really hard on this stuff. The Sea Shuttle's damage type is unique, meaning that there'll be enemies that will particularly weaken its or into its attacks. Ah, yes, yeah, so like breaking down gates and stuff like that. So it does siege damage then. It's a bit like the Janundu, right? Um, the Janundus in the um, uh, in the event in in the Desolation, right? That makes sense to me. Uh, of a world boss with a bit phase that requires players to jump on the siege turtles to break its shields. I'm not really a huge fan of mechanics like this. Like mechanics that force you to use mounts. Probably kind of annoying, but also kind of inevitable as well. Um, but hey, that's how it goes. And it says it won't overuse the content. They can only be accessed with the Siege Channel. Thank you very much. Done some work to acquire it. And it says the quest to unlock the Siege Channel will be no longer than the... It'll be longer than the Raptor or the Springer, but shorter than the Griffin or the Sky Scale. Um, point of Season 4's Roller Beetle. Interesting that it's not like a baseline mastery. I'm really happy to hear that, by the way. This actually makes me really happy. Um, I like that a lot. Um, because one of my really big criticisms of masteries is that you just get them arbitrarily. Oh, you know, you kill level 80 frog. Oh, and now I can do ley line gliding. Oh, you know, I've killed, um, you know, I've, you know, I've, I fought, you know, fought level 80 elite crab. And now all of a sudden, you know, I can, uh, I can manipulate the magic of jade, right? This is very, 
immersion breaking. It's not very good mechanically in my opinion. So yeah, I'm very happy to hear that. I would actually like to see similar things for as many masteries as possible. Masteries to me have always lacked that quest element um, where you need to actually do something related to the master that you're unlocking to unlock. That's a nice touch. Great. Great, 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 great. Uh, oh. Oh. Whoa. One place you won't see this each channel is in World vs. World. At least... Not yet. I mentioned the possibility as a throwaway comment, expecting it to be shot down. But arena designer Ben Kirsch said that actually, the team's been thinking about how they can implement them to Guild Wars 2's massive PvP war since the beginning. With the upcoming world restructuring, changing service for alliances, and the expansion's new set of elite specializations, the feeling is that it would be too destabilizing for the moment. Instead, arena wants to talk to the World vs. World community and figure out uh, if and how they would want such a feature, for instance, is perhaps there's a new siege option that could work similarly to this in Siege Golems. Yeah, I think that would probably be the way to go. I think you'd have to have it supply capped. Being able to do it anytime you want, just like randomly mount up, probably not a, not a good idea, guys. Very, very bad. Okay. Even if they are contained to PvE, Siege Turtles are going to be a huge part of Guild Wars 2's next year. It's a solid traversal option, and its combat utility makes it stand out from the pack. Hell yeah. The most crucial thing is that it passes the basic test. It's fun to ride. Continuing Guild Wars 2's tradition of having the best mounts in MMOs. Hell yeah, we're the best at at least something, okay? We've got the best mounts in the game. We've got the, you know, we've got no gear grind, okay? We've, we've got that going for us, okay? I'm, you know, I'm struggling after that. But you know, no, we've got the best world versus world. We've got the best PvP. We've got the best combat. Yes! Good! we got to pat ourselves on the back, dust ourselves off, and move into the Ender Dragons, guys. Let's do this. I'm ready to game. You're trying to get the Siege Turtle for yourself, along with all of End of Dragons Elite Specializations in the upcoming beta event, starting November 30th. Ooh, that's right. We are in deep. We're ready to go. We're ready to bring the energy, bring the... Phil Savage there. Okay, look at it. It's a good name. Okay, ooh, he's a Guild Wars 2 enjoyer. Nice. I like it. Well, I've got to say, um, it's pretty good. I'm not really a mega mount enthusiast. It's not really something that I'm mega hyped about, you know, like super, super hyped up about. But I've got to say, the implementation here, it actually looks really good. Uh, the model looks amazing. I love the animations on these little guys, or these big guys, I suppose. The collaborative feature is super cool. The fact that, you know, you have to have a gunner. They can help you by making the total go faster. You've got to coordinate the speed boost so it makes sense. I love to see it, guys. This is what I'm talking about. The energy is here. The energy! is here. Now, that's not, it's not the same Ben, guys. Ben P is the Ben who hangs out here. This would be Ben K, I guess. It'd be a different one there. But look at that. Look at that. Blah, blah. Smash onto these Brotherhood gamers or something like that. Get on that turtle and then boom. Let's go. Yeah, I like it. It's going to be fun to use. It's going to be fun to smash with. It's going to be really cool to watch them all like running around. Um, I think it would be fun like because it would actually be fun to see an implementation of this in World vs. World. Like, certainly from a fantasy perspective. Because we don't really have any, like, massive siege engine, right? And if it was really, really slow, really, really big and fat, and just massive, you have this huge turtle just following you around, like, just firing off shots. It could be really cool for the, uh, kind of, the role-playing factor, the fantasy thing there. I think for Open World 2, you're going to see players going around these things and go, like, whoa, that's a big turtle, right? It's... it's, it's that's a pretty big turtle right there. You know what I want to see, though? This is going to be sick. Turtles on the skiffs, right? I bet, look, I bet you can do this. I bet you can actually load up your players onto uh, the mounts and then on the skiffs and then drive around on the skiff with the turtle, right? That's going to be big. I, I, seriously, like, that's, uh, that's a leak right there, okay? You better be ready for that. You know, that's where the energy is really going to kick in. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, I imagine, oh yeah, I imagine the gunner uh, being able to like, you know, the gun will probably have more of a free a freer camera. Because yeah, right now mounts kind of snap you back. They don't really use free camera. I imagine that either they'll enable free camera for mounts, or they'll give the gunner a custom, um, they'll probably make it a bit like action cam if I had to guess, right? They'd probably just action cam you, so you can just choose where you're going to fire, right? And you have like that kind of aiming situation that would be the general approach in that regard. But yeah. Very cool. I like it. The Siege Turtle, it's exciting. Get ready for it. The beta's coming out on November 30th. We'll see how powerful it is. 25 might. Big turtle damage. It's going to be fantastic. Big, big energy. I love to see it.